blessed today. We have um, Pastor Israel and Rachel Campbell here, all the way from Hermosa Beach, California. Amen. They have, uh, Pastor Israel grew up with not necessarily the best upbringing and, and things, but God redeemed that. He ended up at the call of ministry, became a youth pastor, associate pastor, evangelist. He's done it all. They planted a church in Wilson, North Carolina that was multi-site, multi-campus. I had the privilege of ministering there years ago. And I have to tell a quick story, a funny story about this. So I looked online and I knew I was going to do a kids crusade there, kids conference for the weekend. And I looked online just to kind of see some information about the church. And it said special guest speaker next Sunday morning for the adults, Pastor Eric Hamp from Denver, Colorado. And I thought, wait a minute. I'm just doing a kid's service. What, what's going on? And I called the church and I kind of, they don't even know this. I called the church and kind of disguised my voice and said, I hear you're having a guest speaker next Sunday morning. Yes, Pastor Eric Hamp is going to be preaching uh, next Sunday morning. I said, okay, thank you. God bless you. And I went into my office and I said, dear Lord, I'm glad I found this out before I went there. I was only prepared to do the kids' services, but we had a great time. God moved. We even had an awesome time with the adult service, but God used them, and they've been a friend to the ministry for years, and Pastor Israel is known for his passionate preaching, his intentional practicality. He's ministered all over the world in churches, conferences, on television, and I tell you what, you can catch him anytime with the convertible top down in sunny California with his wife, Rachel, their three children, Phoebe, Chloe, and Silas, and today they are the pastors of Florida flourishing church, which is also a multi-site, multi-campus church, and God is doing great things in their midst. You are going to be blessed today by one of the greatest preachers in America. I wish you'd give Word of Life Christian Center welcome to Pastor Israel Campbell. Thank you so much. Come on, can we give Jesus a big shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. You can be seated. Uh, I love that. I love finding out that story, Eric, that we didn't tell you. That's, that's how we roll. And, uh, and then, Pastor, uh, I'm going to meet you in the lobby to find out about revelations. You said if you had any questions to go into the lobby and ask you. And my, I got some eschatology questions. Come on. And so I'm hoping to get the date. I'm hoping to get the time. I know where he's coming back. He's coming back in L.A. because we need it more. So uh, we're so grateful to be here celebrating in a, uh, in a sense Pastor Gala and uh, Pastor Bagwell's uh, 45th anniversary that is incredible and uh, so it's great that we can give them an opportunity to get some rest and uh, it's just a great honor I want to uh, preach uh, I've changed my message three times on the way here this morning and uh, if you could just stand with me quickly as we read out of the Word of God and, uh, and then we will get right into it. Uh, I asked pastor how long I could preach till. He said, you know, 12, 30, one o'clock. Uh, I asked his staff and they said, if you were done by 12, uh, by 1130, we'd have you come back again. And so I just think it's going to be a little quicker of a message. Did I get any amens? Oh, it's quiet in here. <laughs> Acts chapter three, verse 19 through 20 says this. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Verse 20, then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. He will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Father God, we thank you for an incredible time of praise and worship this morning. We thank you that we were able to declare by faith that breakthrough is coming. 
Father God, we thank you for our pastors who are celebrating 45 years of marriage. Father God, we thank you that we have the opportunity today to be here and join together, that our children are not just being uh, watching something on an iPad, but there's a service for them today. Our youth are being able to be in a service, and we just thank you now for the opportunity to get into your word. We know that it's your word that renews our mind. It's your word. That if we put in our heart, as the psalmist said, it'll keep us from sinning against you. It's your word that increases our faith. And we pray that this morning would be a time of refreshing. That this morning we would leave this place different than how we came in. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, if you believe that, would you say amen? Come on, would you say amen? Amen. You can be seated. Again, it is uh, such an honor and privilege to be here. Rachel and I pastor in Los Angeles County in the city of Hermosa Beach. And we are actually currently right now on lockdown in Los Angeles. And so we are not able to have any indoor services. We do Saturday night services outdoor in our parking lot. We string the lights and we do everything outside in the palm trees. We've tried to make it as cool as possible. But there was something about this morning coming to Word of Life, a place that we have known for so many years, a pastor that has spoke so much into our life, seeing friends that we just immediately, you even used the word, you said it was just refreshing to see some friends and then to see all of your faces that are familiar. It just was something that was like, oh, come on, Rach, how good was it just to be here this morning? So uh, as fun as it is to preach to you, you guys got to know it was just fun coming to church on a Sunday morning because we haven't been able to do that in California. So thank you, Word of Life, for letting us come to church this morning. And uh, I was telling Rachel, of course, you know, I only own three suits. I, owe, I have one suit that is specifically only for weddings. I own another suit that is for Easter. And then I have a third suit, and I call it my Bagwell suit because it's the only time I wear a suit. Because in California, we're just lazy. <laughs> well, Sunday morning, man, it's like whatever it, you, whatever it is doesn't have a wrinkle, then just wear it. And we're all casual. But when I come to Word of Life, uh, you know, uh, I, I, and, and I found out Pastor Bagwell uh, had said, he told me last night, he said, hey, and I don't wear a tie anymore on Sunday morning. I, I, I knew revival was coming. I knew revival was coming. And I then I see the skin pulpit I like all things are awesome and uh, so I just want to get into this I I really did feel prophetically where the Bible says now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away but verse 20 I love this in Acts that times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord how many of you could use a little bit of refreshment in 2020 three of you the rest of you are just loving life and you want to buy bulk masks come on anybody want to have some times of refreshment that come from the presence of the lord and and i love that the bible says prophetically that there is going to be some times of refreshment i love that the bible tells us that it will be from the presence of the lord because i have been known to take a vacation before with my kids and my wife wife thinking that that was going to bring refreshment but how many of you have ever taken a vacation and then you needed a vacation from your vacation anybody know what I'm talking about has anybody ever gone to Orlando and gone to Disneyland do you know the scripture that says that there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth come on how many of you know that is actually a description of Disney World come on your kids are hot from standing in line they've all they've had is cotton candy and drinking coca-cola and it is humid you like sweat through a shirt before you've even been there and then you realize you you have paid all this money and you only went on three rides for the entire day and everybody there is mad and cranky and you spent that as your time of refreshing and you just wished you could have just gone back home and stayed in bed come on anybody know what I'm talking about 
Uh, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that there will be times of refreshing, that there will be such an atmosphere, there will be such a, a change in our soul and in our spirit that it will be like we went on a vacation without all the drama. You ever been on a vacation and then the person that maybe you went on vacation with is one of those planners? If you're a planner, don't do anything. Or if you're next to a planner, just move your eyebrows. Don't, don't, don't call them out. But come on, you know, you, you just wanted to lay by the pool, but they wanted to go to 52 different things and stare at a monument and get a picture with it. Come on, that's not vacation. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of planners in here. Sorry. <laughs> But, but, but the Bible says that there will be times of refreshment. And as Rachel and I were driving to church this morning, I, like I said, I changed my message because I felt like the Holy Spirit said that there was something that I needed to prophesy. There was something that I needed to declare. There was something that I needed to get in your spirit. There was something I needed to step on your toes to begin to get inside of you that God declares and God promises that you and I can have a time of refreshment. It didn't matter what year it was. He didn't say in parentheses, except 2020 or except COVID-19 or except a political uh, uh, election. No, he said you and I can experience times of refreshment. I wish there was somebody here this morning that would say that's a word for me. That's a word for my family. That's a word for my church. I I need that in Jesus name. Come on, if you believe that, would you lift your hands towards heaven and come on, just repeat this simple prayer with me. Say, God, your word says I can experience times of refreshment and by faith I receive it in Jesus name. Come on, somebody say amen. I love that verse in Proverbs where it says that those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So it's not a Christian, I just need to be refreshed. It's so tough and it's so hard and I just came today to be refreshed. Well, the Bible actually says you can be refreshed, but this is something that you can actually initiate. It, sound man, is this microphone working? Because I just said something really good and I thought maybe you didn't hear it. That the you, you and I can initiate the refreshing. I know that, that that might not be something you wanted to hear because oftentimes we, we, we're just waiting, we're just hoping, we're just, I, I hope something gets better. And God says, not only have I promised times of refreshing, but I'm also empowering you to initiate the times of refreshing so you can't be a victim anymore. You can't be a, a, a pouty pout anymore. You can't be be a, 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 a you, you just can't be a Karen anymore sorry if your name's Karen <laughs> I apologize but, but 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 the reality is you and I can be refreshed if we decide to refresh others I was the nicest golf clap I have ever received in my life thank you so much Come on, point to about two or three people around you and say, I'm going to be refreshed because I'm going to refresh you. Oh, listen, I, 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 listen to this text. I, I, I love Genesis chapter 18, verses one through five, which is, is one of the most um, powerful historic 
text in Genesis because it has everything to do with Abraham and Sarah being promised that they were going to have Isaac. And we understand from this text, it's a powerful text because we know how old they are. They, they, are, uh, they have celebrated more than 45 years of marriage. Come on. They, they are up there in age and God promises them a child. But check out what happens before the promise, before the miracle. Genesis chapter 18 verses 1 through 5 says that the Lord appeared again to Abraham near the oak tree belonging to Mamre. And one day Abraham was sitting at the entrance of the tent during the hottest part of the day. He looked up and he noticed three men standing near when he saw them, he ran to meet them and he welcomed them, bowing low to the ground. My Lord, he said, if it pleases you, why don't you stop here for a while? Rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to wash your feet. And since you've honored your servant with this visit, let me prepare some food to refresh you before you come continue on and your journey. All right, they said, do as you say. Did you catch the part where Abraham is there in the heat of the day and he sees the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? The Bible will, most theologians believe when he saw all three, he sees the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. And what is the one thing that Abraham does? Abraham says, I want to refresh you. And we know from his history, they got quite a refreshing back. And so I just want to encourage us, how do we do that in a practical way? Because I can preach it and I can yell it and I can give you some information, but I'm praying today that you and I get some transformation and that we don't just hear that, uh, that refreshment is available, but we would be the type of people that would say, come on, I'm going to initiate. I'm going to walk in this. I'm going to be this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh my marriage. I'm going to refresh my kids. Come on. I'm going to refresh my community. I'm going to refresh my neighborhood, my church, my family. Come on, somebody say amen. The first thing that I just bring out of that text is, is Abraham is sitting there and it's the heat of the day. Now, remember, they've got no air conditioning. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever had company come over and you weren't expecting it, but I hate that. My, 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 we, when my mom comes to our house in California, I don't know what it is, but we have one junk drawer that we just kind of put everything in. Anybody got a junk drawer? Uh, and, and, and it's like, you shouldn't even know where it is, but every time my mom comes, she's the first thing she opens to try to put something away. She, she, no, she goes for our junk drawer and it's like embarrassing because you're like, we cleaned up the entire house to put all the junk in this one little drawer and the only only drawer she opens is our junk drawer. Does, it, does anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and so I'm just thinking of, 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 you know, when people come over unexpected and you're like, oh, today was my day off. And we haven't, done, we haven't, we haven't cleaned the cups for the coffee yet. And we, we still have stuff on the couch. And it's just like, it's a mad rush, right? You're like, bloop, 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 clean. imagine God coming to your house. <laughs> Uh, he knows where the junk drawer is and he knows everything that's in it already. Uh, it's, it's the heat of the day. Here's Abraham. Because they didn't have air conditioning, right? It's hot. Come on, how, how many of you have gotten used to air conditioning and you say it's the will of God, right? Uh, uh, and then you go somewhere and they don't. And you're like, how did they live? And so here's Abraham in the heat of the day. And then here comes 
the, the, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, three, and they're not ready for it. And, 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 and it's like, it could be stress moment. It could be like, oh my goodness, we're not ready. It could be one of those things like when the Jehovah Witnesses come by, you don't even answer the door. You know, you're just trying to pretend like you're not there. <laughs> you just hide. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> it was a, a true story. When I was a kid, my parents would say that like, hey, everybody be quiet. The Jehovah Witnesses are here. And I didn't know. And we'd have to like duck and pretend like nobody was home. And I was just a kid. I was like six or seven. And I just always knew that when the Jehovah Witnesses came, you were supposed to duck and, and in my six-year-old mind I just thought it was because they were bad they were a gang they were you know something terrible but it was just my parents were pastors and they just didn't want to argue with them again and because they knew they were pastors they'd always come to argue and they had never been to your class on revelations on on Monday nights for one hour and and so we we, we would always duck and then I was about like 14 15 years old and I was at school and my friend says oh you know and I invited him to church and he goes oh I can't go to your church I'm a Jehovah Witness and I was like like, ah, like freaked out like he was going to do something. I don't know why I told you that, but uh, uh, while I'm sitting here, uh, he, here's Abraham and he had every opportunity to, to maybe pretend like he didn't see him. He had every opportunity to freak out. He had every opportunity to be like, I can't believe you'd show up. He had every opportunity to go, it's so hot. How come you haven't created air conditioning yet, God? He had every opportunity. And what does he do? He begins to encourage. He begins to say, hey, on your way, why don't you stay here? Hey, this can be a place of refreshing. This can be a place of transformation. And if you and I are going to experience the refreshment that God says, somewhere along the way, you and I have to become encouragers. And I know what you're thinking, but you don't know my personality, Israel. You know what? I don't have the greatest personality ever. You know what? Sometimes I have to fake it. Sometimes I smile when I don't want to smile. Sometimes I encourage when I don't feel like encouraging. I can be sarcastic. I can be a keyboard ninja. I could be a troll if I wanted. But you know what? I know who God's called me to be. I know what he has said, who I am. And I just felt like that maybe in the world we live in, in 2020, maybe as Christ followers, you and I shouldn't complain about how tough 2020 is. And maybe in our workplace and maybe in our family and maybe to those around us, we could begin to encourage those people. Come on, God is going to do a miracle in your life. Come on, God can help your marriage. Come on, God can change the circumstance. But sometimes I see Christians on the uh, on Facebook, those keyboard ninjas. Come on, I've seen them on Instagram, and I'm like, will you stop? You're making it bad for all of us. Right? Oh, it's quiet in here. Some of you are like, I knew he followed me. <laughs> well, why is it so hard for us to be encouraging? Why do we have to be negative Nancy? <laughs> Again, sorry if your name's Nancy. <laughs> it rhymed. <laughs> is that a crime? Oh, man, I got, I got more. <laughs> but, but, but the reality is... Oftentimes, our circumstances will dictate who and how we respond. So we're in a negative world, we become negative. But that's not who Christ called us to be. You may say, oh, Israel, you're faking it. No, I'm not faking it. The Bible says, speak those things that aren't as though they are. And so I'm not trying to be fake. I'm not trying to be the next Tony Robbins. I'm not trying to be a motivational speaker. I'm trying to be who God called me to be. And he said, sometimes you have to speak to those things that aren't as though they are. And if we are going to see the, the, the rapture, the rain, and the revival, we better, not in that order, come on, if we're going to see those things, then maybe the Christ followers need to have a little bit of encouragement that says, come on, our greatest times, our greatest moments, our greatest years are ahead. Uh, I just don't know why I'm never refreshed. I don't know why it's so hard. I don't know why the air is so thin in Denver. I don't know why my skin's so dry. I don't know. Learn to be an encourager. Teach yourself 
to encourage. And it is difficult. It is not easy, but it is a skill set as Christ followers we should know how to use. And, and, and I, I'll tell you, it's awkward sometimes because I've tried to be an encourager. Anytime I'm out and about, I try to be an encourager. And can I tell you, I don't get it right all the time. Oh, it's embarrassing because I'm like trying to say something and Rachel knows and I'm with Rachel and we'll have somebody maybe serving us food and then I'll be like, your nails are pretty. <laughs> and it's just awkward. <laughs> and Rachel just looks at me like, yeah, that wasn't the one to do. <laughs> and then I'll look at her nails and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, uh, I just, but, but I, I, the other day I was jogging and, 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 we, and, and I stopped and I was stretching and I felt like God told me to tell this guy that, 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 he lo that God loved him and, and, and God was going to do a miracle in his life. And have, has the Holy Spirit ever spoke to you and you went like this? La, 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 la. <laughs> and I'm like, this guy looked like a, he was a biker. And if you know me, I am quintessential Southern California. I don't even have socks on this morning. Uh, don't tell Pastor Bagwell. Uh, I, 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 but but that's, that's like, I'm just kind of laid back surfer, kind of, I, I, I don't drive a motorcycle. I actually have a Vespa. I know that that's not masculine, but it's like cool in Southern California Vespa, not like Italian Vespa. <laughs> Come on, it's like cool uh, Vespa. Uh, and, but, but talking to this guy, he was like, biker and it was like like something uh mongoose gang or something and and he just looked tough and looked mean and here is you know skinny jean jogging israel <laughs> flourishing church <laughs> and uh i just felt like i'm supposed to give him a word and so i just i was like oh, okay and i just I, I just said it and i'm like you know i just believe that god loves you and god has a word for you and i start and i and god's going to get you through this season and and I could feel the Holy Spirit on me. And then I looked over at him and he's like, thanks, <laughs> and walked away. <laughs> you thought it was going to be a good story, huh? You thought he was going to get saved. You thought he was going to turn and ride Vespas for Jesus. No, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And it was awkward. Hey, guy that I've never met. <laughs> It was awkward, but you know what? I'm getting better and better at it. And more and more, I'm becoming an encourager and it's part of who I am. And while others will stay depressed and others will stay in a place of unrefreshment, come on, I know that I am going to be refreshed. I came in here this morning knowing that as I refresh you, come on, I'm going to get refreshed. As I came in, I knew that as I encourage, come on, God will begin to encourage you. You know what I do? It is, uh, and Rachel knows this, is I have some pastor friends. Uh, and any time church, uh, you know, California, the governor says you're all closed down or we have somebody that moves that was in our church, but they're like, we're not living in California anymore. We're moving to Denver. Yep, you get them all. Uh, and uh, 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 anytime something like that happens and I get discouraged, you know, the first thing I've trained my spirit to do is I send five text messages to other pastors and I just encourage them and say, come on, God's gonna do something great in your church this weekend. I'm praying for revival for you. I'm praying that people are gonna get plugged in. And you know what? The first one is tough. I pray God does something in your life because you're sure not doing nothing in mine. <laughs> Second one, I'm like, you know, it gets a little, by the fifth one, I'm prophesying, I'm declaring, and my whole world changes. If you and I would train ourselves to be encouragers, come on, we would position ourselves to be refreshed. Why don't you just do this? I know we're spread out, but you can yell and shout loud. I want you to point to three people and say, you look better this week than you did last week. Come on, just encourage them. Don't say it to your spouse, you'll get in trouble. Come on, come on, I'm looking, I'm seeing, are you pointing? Come on, you look better this week than you did last week. Hallelujah, is that all right? William Arthur Ward said, flatter me and I, might, I may not believe you. Criticize me and I may not like you. Ignore me and I might not forgive me. Encourage me and I'll never forget you. I love that they found Abraham Lincoln when he was assassinated inside of his pocket he had uh, a, a newspaper article uh, from the editor Horace Greeley because it was one of the first articles 
that actually painted the portrait of Abraham Lincoln as a great leader. Because of the Civil War, every article press clip that was written was usually written about how Abraham Lincoln wasn't doing well. When he died, he found a, cl a paper clipping of the article that said he was doing a good job. He's one of America's favorite presidents, and even he needed a little bit of encouragement now and then to keep on going. So come on, as Christ followers, come on, how many of you want to be encouraging? Amen? Is this all right? I, 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 one of the things that I love about Abraham and in this text is that he spoke faith. He spoke faith. And I want to be an encourager, and I also want to be a person who speaks faith. You're right now, I loved what you said, Pastor, about revival, about rapture. I even like your, dan your rapture dance move, like it was like prophetic, like getting caught up in the air. That was awesome. And then terrain, it was a faith message. And I've heard plenty of doom and gloom about revelations. As a kid, I remember learning about 666 and, and then being told that Michael Jordan was six foot six and six inches. And I thought, no, I remember. Uh, 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 in 19, I think it was, was it, was it the book that came out that it was like 1,989 reasons why the rapture would happen in 1988 or 89, 1989. And then the, of course, the reprint of 1,900 and whatever reasons why it was going to happen in 1990. I mean, whatever. But I remember being scared as a kid about the rapture because when we were raised in church and the Dakes Church and, and all this, it was so, it was, we were freaked out about all that stuff and it was fear. Oh, how good was that? You need to be in the class Monday night. How good was that about the faith of come on, there's going to be a revival. There's going to be a rapture. There's going to be a rain. Come on, Christians. I know things are bleak in 2020. Come on. It's been a tough year. Maybe one of the toughest years in the history of your life. But somewhere along the way, we've got to begin to speak faith. Come on. That we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Come on. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Come on. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. We We've got to speak faith. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the healer. Come on. He is the restorer. And it's so easy. And maybe you're like, nobody like is like that here in Denver. Maybe I'm only talking about L.A. folks. But come on. I have seen some Christians tend to not speak faith. And I don't want to be known as that kind of person. I want to be a person that speaks faith. Amen? Faith into our kids. Faith over our nation. Faith over racial tension. Faith over finances. Faith over sickness. Come on. Faith over disease. Come on. Faith over our church. Faith over our young people. Come on. Anybody want to speak faith? I want, I, I, I want to be a person that speaks and declares faith over these times, this is gonna be our best moment. It's gonna be our greatest time to shine. Uh, over our kids, come on. You're gonna remember this and you're gonna thank God for his faithfulness. You're gonna see miracles like you never believed. Hey, come on, I wanna speak, he is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. It's already in the thicket, come on. We want to speak faith, come on, revival. You know what we're seeing in LA? Even though we've been closed and we're doing Saturday nights only, we're, we're seeing people that have never been to church, have never really been connected to God, and they're coming in and they see us lifting their hands and they don't know what else to do except lift up their hands. We're in the epicenter of the most uh, ungodly postmodern world. We are right there in LA. I mean, anything bad comes out of the world, it comes from my city. And can I tell you, I'm not like, it's so tough in LA, it's so hard. We are saying, come on, there is revival. They need Jesus more than ever. They don't even know what they're looking for, but God does. Come on, we're going to see revival. We got to speak faith. Is that all right to say? Come on, speak some faith right now over yourself. Right now, I'm going to watch
Speak it over yourself like you mean it. Come on, he's my provider. He's my healer. My family will be saved. This church will experience revival. We're going to see transformation. I, I think Pastor Eric Camp double dog dared you. I triple dog dare you. Why don't you declare it over yourself right now? I heard it some yes, but I want to hear you say it. Way back there, what? Whoa! Right there! Come on! Yeah! What? Over here? Yes! Over here? God bless us! Come on, some faith! How many of you need it in your life? Some of you are like, don't you dare look at me, Israel. Don't you dare look at me. Encouraging, speaking faith. I love this. You see, see Abraham, hey, what can I do for you? Can I get you some water? Yes. Can I wash your feet? Can you imagine washing God's feet? That's awesome. <laughs> I, 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 can I get you some? I mean, most of us, when we see God or have conversations with God, it's all about what God can do for us. But do you just see Abraham's mentality? Is what can I do for God? And unfortunately, at times, Christianity can become a consumerism mentality where we're only trying to get what we can get from God. And he's so good, he does bless us. He does help us. He does heal us. And those are all things that I just said with faith. But you know what ties it in? Is when we go, look how good God has been. And what can I do? How can I serve? What can I do, God, to bless you? What can I do to bless your house? And and uh, so often... Uh, uh, you know, I, I had this, and I think I might have shared this before, but I've had people, uh, young people, young men, come and, and want to uh, just go out to coffee with me and say, hey, Israel, can I take you out to coffee? I just want to pick your brain or do whatever. And so I've gone off to coffee, and I've had one of these young men uh, come to me and say, hey, Israel, and you know, I know you're pastor in California, and you're, you're, you're traveling a lot. I saw you were just speaking in Australia, and, and you were there, and, I, and I'm not trying to name drop, okay? I'm not trying to name drop. I was just talking to Oprah about that the other day. Uh, I hate that. I, I, I don't like that. I, I wasn't trying to do that, but he, he just, we were talking uh, and he was like, I want to do that. Can you kind of tell me how? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I can tell you how. Uh, does your church have a Sunday school class? And the guy, young man goes, yeah. And I said, you know what I would do if I was you is I would go serve your pastor and teach a Sunday school class. And he was like, oh, oh, that's awesome. No, Israel, I think you misunderstood. Um, you know how you're traveling and you're pastoring in California and you get to go places like Word of Life, you get to do that. That's something that I would like to do. Can you tell me how I can do that? And I was like, oh, Oh, I'm so sorry. You want to go travel and do church. And like, yeah, yes. I'm like, oh, does your church have a Sunday school class? Because if I was you, I, I, would, I would go serve my pastor's vision. And, and, and if you begin to serve and you're faithful in the little things, then God will make you rule over much. And, and so I kind of told him my testimony is when I first rededicated my life to Christ, I, I went to every single church thing there was. Uh, it was and it was kind of awkward sometimes because I would go to the youth services and then I'd go to the adult service and then they'd have like newly divorced and I'd go to that and and then they'd have the single women and, I, and all the single ladies and I would go and and, uh, uh, and 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 then they'd have the 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 people that were the pillars that were you know retired I'd go to that service I went to every single thing that they had I would have gone to revelations it would have helped me I, I I went to everything everything the door was open and then I served hey do you need help do you need me to set up do you need me to tear down you know what the next thing they knew is they needed an opportunity for somebody to be a junior high Sunday school 
teacher, guess who the first person they asked? They said, we might as well ask Israel because he's here all the time anyhow. And then I went from junior high uh, uh, Sunday school teacher to then running the junior high ministry, then from junior high ministry to the high school ministry, from the high school ministry, college and career, from college and career, we got asked to go uh, pastor, youth pastor in Orlando, Florida. We went from Orlando, Florida to North Kakalaka. We then went from North Kakalaka. We did multiple campuses and now we're in Hermosa Beach where we do believe that Jesus is going to return in the air because I know that that is where he wants to come. And, 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 and so we're there and people want to ask, how did it happen? It all happened because at an early age and a continual age, all we did was ever serve. And if you can begin to get a heart of serving your neighbors, serving the house of God, serving your family, then can I tell you, get ready for God to do a miracle in your life. But consumer Christianity is just, what about me? There wasn't any parking for me. I hope they give me the whole pew. I don't want anybody else on my pew. I can put my leg up if I get the whole pew. That was like a Jim Gaffigan voice, wasn't it, honey? Uh, uh, but I wasn't trying to do that. But uh, just, just consu- it's all about me, me, me. It's all about what I can get. And they didn't sing my favorite song. Well, did you know this is worship service wasn't actually about you in the first place? <laughs> it's quiet in this Presbyterian church this morning. Come on. Do you know what I'm saying? We can get so about me. And the best way to crush me is to serve and to say, it's not about me. It's about what God has done for me. And I just want to serve him any way that I can. Man, there should be lineups for being ushers. There should be lineups for people to say, I want to serve in the children's ministry. There should be lineups for help with parking. There should be lines up for people serving. And it's amazing, most churches, probably not in Denver, probably only in LA. So let me say that, probably only in LA. But it's like 10% of the people do 90% of the work and the service. But you know what real revival is? Real revival is not just a service where we feel God's presence. It is where revival Revival begins in our heart and it starts inside of us even before it gets to the church and we begin to serve each other and we begin to say, come on, I want to be a part. And I just feel that there's a spirit of refreshing that is going to come upon this place and it's not how you thought it was going to happen. It's actually going to be initiated when you say, come on, I want to serve in the kids department. Come on, I want to be an usher. Come on, can I can I be a part? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to set up and tear down in the upper room for revelations uh, uh, on Monday nights. Come on, whatever it is, start getting that inside of you. And as you serve, you will be be shocked at what God does while you and I begin to serve his house. Is that all right? I just got five more minutes. Who will give me five more minutes? Who will give me five? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Uh Uh-uh, I won't do that to you, I promise. I, I, I just, I love this scripture. Can you picture it in your mind? Or you have to wait till heaven, watch it on the Blu-ray. Can you, can you kind of see it today in your mind? Here's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And what does Abraham do? It wasn't about, well, I'm glad you're here because I've got some problems with my cows. Well, I'm glad you're here because my wife is a hot mess. Come on, I'm glad you're here because I've been having uh, problems with Ishmael and I need somebody to set that boy straight. Come on, I'm glad you showed up. Uh, it's the heat of the day and I'm hot. I wish you could send a east wind to give me a little refreshing. Did you notice Abraham didn't mention anything about his needs? The first thing he looked at is, God, how can I be involved in creating an atmosphere where you're refreshed? And that has changed my mind because often I'm thinking about me uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, innately selfish. Anybody innately selfish? Men, anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? Like my wife is number seven of 10. You don't get to be selfish when you're number seven of 10. You just take whatever is left and you're like, okay. And I remember when we first got married, she, she, she comes from seven of 10 kids, seven of 10 kids. And, and whatever is clean, if you grab it first, you get to wear it. 
we got married and she would wait and me i just all my mom my dad passed away early and it was just me and my mom i had my own closet my own bed my wife her entire life her entire life has never had a bed to herself because when she was younger she actually slept with three of her other sisters and occasionally she would sleep at the at the feet and they would all sleep in the king side bed and she would sleep at their feet and then she got married to me and she likes to snuggle because that's how she always was. And I'm like, come on. She'd wear my clothes. She'd wear my clothes. Ah. How many of you know you get married? You have a kid. You have two kids. You have three kids. I am no longer selfish. I am dead to myself. Come on. I have. Uh, uh, uh. You, you get to a point. And I think as Christ followers, we got to get to a point where it's not about us, and it's actually about others. And as we begin to model that and we begin to do that, times of refreshing are coming our way. Come on, can you lift up those hands towards heaven? Come on, can you lift those hands towards heaven? Come on, can you lift those hands towards heaven? Father God, come on, keep those hands up. Father God, we just thank you right now that as we begin to serve your house, we begin to serve others. We begin to serve our church, our community. Father God, we thank you that it initiates times of refreshing. I thank you for it right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Last thing, last point. Look, closing my Bible. Closing my iPad doesn't mean anything because I can always open up my iPad real quick, but I'm closing it. I'm wrapping up. Just stay with me just for a moment. Thank you, worship team. How awesome is your worship team? Y'all know you're spoiled, don't you? Y'all know you're spoiled, right? You guys are awesome. So good. We get to travel all over, and it is so good for Rachel and I this morning to just be here and be refreshed. And uh, thank you for creating that atmosphere that we can come in week in and week out and feel the presence of God. Because there are teams that know how to sing, know how to move from track to track, and know how to do all the production side of it. And it sounds really tight, but often there's sometimes no anointing in it. And as a church, we're so grateful that week in and week out, there's an atmosphere that is created that the prophetic can flow. The Bible says, uh, the Bible says that uh, Elisha said, bring me the harp, come on, so that I can prophesy. And I know one of the reasons the prophetic gift is so uh, easily accessible in this house from Pastor Bagwell and Pastor Gala is because of the worship that you guys do. And I just want to prophesy times of refreshing are coming on you. Because you have refreshed others, you're going to be refreshed. And there are times that you get up here and nobody knows what's been happening in your family and nobody knows what's been happening in the drama. And if there's ever deep that could happen in church they can sometimes be on the worship team and nobody knows some of the the struggles or the things you face but you've come in and said come on we're going to create an atmosphere where people are refreshed and they feel the presence of God and the thus saith the Lord over you is because you have done that times of refreshing are coming on you and there are new songs and there are new progressions and there are new things that you're going to begin to see and even new opportunities and people will wonder why is it happening to you and you might as well put your shoulders back and your head up and just know that because I caused times of refreshment for others God sees it and says come on times of refreshment are coming on you and your family in Jesus name in Jesus name a vacation from your vacation supernatural rest is coming upon you and I see the battery of the phone where it's red and you're on empty right now 
and you know how to fake it. You've been around good enough. You know how to do everything right. But the thus saith the Lord is just like a battery that has been charged and it says fully charged. Something is coming upon you today and there is a recharging. There is a refreshing that only God can do. And you're going to wake up in the morning early and it's not going to need six coffees to be able to do it. It's going to be a new source of life. All I can say, fresh vision vision, fresh anointing, fresh purpose, and there has been a depression and a cloud that is coming off of you today. And as you have fought through, you are creating an atmosphere to be refreshed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Church, would you stand with me just for a second? Would you stand with me? Would you stand with me? The Bible says in Acts that times of refreshment are available to you and I. The book of Proverbs declares that, come on, if you refresh others, you will be refreshed. Which lets us know that it's not just a moment that we wait for, that we hope it comes, that we just uh, uh, are just, our circumstances are our circumstances. No, we understand that despite everything that we may be feeling and everything that we might be sensing, we can proclaim that, come on, my situation is is about to change and 2020 doesn't have to dictate my future or my purpose but this is actually going to be a season a time of refreshing and while everyone else is stressed out and everyone else's marriage could be falling apart you and your spouse can actually get closer come on your kids can actually develop a love for God's house come on we are have to hold on that come on something is gonna shift something is gonna change we don't have to wait for an election we don't have to wait for a new year we don't have to wait for a vaccine we don't have to wait for the news to become positive somewhere in here we've got to stir up our spirits to say by faith I receive the times of refreshing are coming my way and I'm gonna initiate it because as I refresh others I am going to be refreshed and I love this story of Abraham. What can I do? Can I create an atmosphere for God to be refreshed? Man, I love that story. I love his heart. And we know the title, subtitle of that chapter is so powerful because it's the title that says, it's the promise of Isaac. And the only other thing that I say that we have to do in this 2020 year, if we're going to experience times of refreshing, is we can't minimize and marginalize our expectation of God. And what I mean by that is, it's been such a difficult year for some of you that we almost want to make it easy for God to still do powerful things so we were believing for this but now we'll just believe for this so that it's just a little easier does it do, anybody know what I'm talking about I, I'm not trying to speak here I'm just talking about what I do is so as a pastor here we are we've got a campus in Hermosa Beach and I'm I'm thinking about our auditorium's not nearly your size and it's small and like okay how are we going to do this and Okay, we're outside in the parking lot and, and, and my wife and I have, uh, uh, what, what's the Christian way to say it? Intense fellowship <laughs> about how, 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 well, maybe, and she's the faith woman right now. She's like, well, maybe we should go see if the Staples Center is open because they've got lots of seats and, and we can do it. And I, I'm like, well, maybe we should just stay in our building and do 32 services over the weekend of 10 people each. You know what I mean? And, 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 and it's like this, this, tendency right now for me not you just me this tendency to almost minimize or marginalize what God can do because of the season that we're in but what is so awesome about this story is that these two
two people, Abraham and Sarah, began to believe in the impossible, that even at their own age, they could have a child, they could have an heir. And I came all the way from Los Angeles. It was a, I don't know, two and a half hour flight. We had to drive here and, 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 and get here and do all the things. And I don't think it was by accident how it worked out. I believe I'm on divine assignment to tell some of you to quit minimizing God and just making it so that it will be easy for him to do a miracle. Why don't we begin to believe in the impossible? And just this week, I went out to lunch with somebody that owns a property in an Orange County. Their building is completely paid off. Their building is completely debt free. And we begin to discuss about, hey, maybe we could do something together. Man, my faith went from just going in our little building to now saying multiple campuses and, and multiple sites and doing multiple things and now my faith is bigger and then after that meeting come on I didn't just stay there we were talking this morning maybe we could rent this building in our city maybe we could go do this in that city and all of a sudden come on in the middle of COVID in the middle of the uh, 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 of, of a rough year our faith is increasing and come on God says he's no respecter of persons if he can do it for us come on he can do it for you and times of refreshing are tied into having the ability to dream the impossible does that make sense you're not refreshed by making it easier you actually be refreshed by dreaming the impossible again and I just feel like there's some of you that have bookshelved your dream on 2020. And I'm here, take the dream off the shelf, get the dust off and look at it and go, this dream was actually too small in the beginning of the year. I need to enlarge the dream and to believe in the impossible. In Jesus name. I said, in Jesus name. I said, in Jesus name. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you? I felt so strong today and that's why I had you stand. Some of you today would say, I need a time of refreshing. I came in here this morning on fumes. I came in here this morning on empty. Came in here on fumes. I came in here on empty and I need God to do something supernatural in my life. I need to be refreshed. And I know that Israel, you said that I've got to initiate some things. Yes, but right now, I believe uh, the Bible says that the times of refreshment come from the presence of the Lord. You already initiated by showing up here this morning. You initiated it by logging on this morning and, and connecting with us online and on the stream right now. And right where you're at, you just say, Israel, I'm on empty. I need God to do a miracle. I can't even get out of the parking lot on the, the tank that is on reserve that I'm I'm at right now. I just want you to lift up both hands towards heaven. I want to pray with you and for you. Hands up all over this auditorium. Just for a second, would you, with your hands up, would you look around and look at the other people that have their hands up? Just look around for a second. Can I tell do you know why I made you do that? Because the enemy will oftentimes try to isolate us and make us feel like we're the only ones that are going through this. And if you will look around, look what the enemy has been trying to do, has been trying to discourage, has been trying to deplete. But can I tell you, come on, today is a miracle day. Today is a day of refreshing. Today his spirit and his presence is going to fill us up. Come on, can you lift up those hands towards heaven? Come on, can you just begin to say, God, I'm believing by faith for time of refreshment father God I prophesy father God I declare father God your word says that it comes in times of refreshment and I pray a supernatural wave would begin to hit every single person watching on stream every single person that is in every single row every single pew we pray that right now in the balcony we pray in the front we pray every person with those hands raised would feel the presence of God like never before in Jesus mighty name we pray come on can you give Jesus a big shout of praise hallelujah hallelujah 
sir, with the black coat, black shirt. It's your morning to be refreshed. And just as this worship leader was being refreshed, you're being refreshed. You're being refreshed. Sir, it's not by accident. You almost didn't make it this morning. There were all kinds of excuses that you could have said, nope, 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 nope. And I, I know all kinds of things, but you came here and God says, supernatural refreshment is coming upon you. Supernatural. A vacation that is not a vacation. People are gonna run into you and wonder, did you go somewhere? Did you, did you just get back from a trip? Did you go to Mexico? <laughs> Where, where, where'd you go? And you're going to be able to say, I was in the presence of God and he refreshed me. Come on, he refreshed me. He refreshed me. Sir, with the good looking gray beard, looking sharp, looking sharp. Times of refreshment. And uh, I just, you know, the Bible says, you know, we hear it so many times when it comes to giving. You know, when we give and uh, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men. And I, I love that it talks about a measure. And I just want you to stir up your faith a little because the measure that you refresh others is about to come on you. And you know what? You're, you're the kind of guy that will help a guy move three times and the other guy will never move you. You know what I'm talking about? You'll just keep on showing up and you'll just keep on helping. And God says, you better get ready and stir your faith up because you, the measure that you refresh others is not tiny. It's, it's not a spoonful. It is like a tractor trailer full that you refresh others. And you know what? That's the measure that's going to be measured back to you as you refresh others. Come on. It's not going to be a little bit, but it is going to be a lot. And I think you just, you, you would accept this much and be grateful for all eternity. You, you, you're that type of person. You get that much refreshing and you'd be like, good to go. And God says, that's awesome. I love that. But I am about to dose you. I am about to dump truck, bless you with refreshing. And it is going to be supernatural in the name of Jesus. Sir, in the very balcony with the tie, you look so much better than I do. I should have wore a tie. I should have wore a tie. You look sharp. Uh, I just, uh, the, the sense of refreshment is coming towards you, but I also just sense that stress is about to come off of you. And I don't know what has or could stress you out. I don't know what things you're carrying, but I just saw about uh, uh, 90 pounds of stress coming off of you in this service. And um, be careful going down those stairs because there's going to be a little bit lighter step in you. And uh, I've said this before, but you're gonna sleep well tonight. It's almost like lately you wake up two or three times and it's like checklist of things you've gotta get done. And I'm telling you, you're gonna sleep the entire night because times of refreshing are coming upon you and who the sun sets free is free indeed it's like he's refreshing you but he's also getting rid of stress in the name of Jesus and I don't know about you but I've learned something under Pastor Bagwell's ministry I've learned to be a spiritual hijack like I, I, I just hijack words like somebody be praying for somebody else I'll be like God that's my word I receive that in Jesus name anybody just receive that like I'm gonna sleep good tonight come on times of refreshing times of refreshing last person I want to pray for you you're right next to the camera you got your hands like this yes sir uh, I, I just again times of refreshing and just like we've said a couple other words uh, you're on empty and you're one of those kind of people that nobody would know you're on empty because you're not negative and you're not a person that would whine and complain about it but you're just it's been a grind and it's been a grind, and it's been a grind. And I just want to declare over you, supernatural time of refreshment is coming your way. And people are going to ask, 
Did you get Botox? People are going to ask, did you get a facial? People are going to ask, did you go to a spa? Did you get a massage? Did you, what, what is it? Because you look younger, you look fresher, you look rejuvenated, and you, you, and you don't have to sell any kind of beauty treatments or anything. You can just say, come on, I was in God's presence, and he completely, re, he completely refreshed and rebuilt me. Come on, anybody say amen to that and receive that? Is that good for you? You need that in Jesus' name? Come on, would you close your eyes? Would you close your eyes? Would you bow your head with me? I want to close today. The Bible says in the book of Acts that times of refreshment would come when we repent of our sins and we turn to God. I was depressed. I was suicidal. My wife, Rachel, was was, was in a season of depression and, and was just, uh, just completely hurt by church and, and people in the church. And I was the same way. We, we both met in Bible school. Our lives were changed. But the moment it changed was really a moment where we said, Jesus, I've been trying to do this on my own and I can't. I repent, I, I turn of my sins, I, I'm gonna run towards you. And that day started a transformation in my life individually, Rachel's life individually. And I just wanna pray with you this morning with every head bowed, all eyes closed. If, you're, if you need to initiate a time of refreshing, can I tell you it starts with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you don't have that relationship, you're at the right place this morning. If you're here this morning, you're just like, man, I've, to, I've been away from God. I've been trying to do my own thing. And, and I, need to, I, I need to get my relationship with God on track. I need to rededicate my life. I need to recommit. We want to pray with you and for you this morning. And so with every head bowed, all eyes closed, I'm simply going to count to three. And I don't believe that we just assembled this morning just for ourselves. I believe we assembled for transformation. We assembled today because somebody was was caught in the, the, the clutch of hell. And today God has here and it, because of the sacrifice of his son, Jesus, he's pulling us out of an eternity away from him to having an eternity with him. And you're at the sound of my voice today. And today's not the day to just leave the same way you came in. Today is a day to have a relationship with Christ and to initiate the times of refreshing by saying, I need you, Jesus and I'm simply going to count to three right now. And at the count of three, if you'd say, that's me, Israel, I want to accept Jesus Christ for the very first time. Or that's me, Israel, I want to rededicate my life. I want to recommit. I've walked away. I've backslid. I've been the prodigal son or daughter. But today, I want to walk in those times of refreshing. I want to spend eternity with Jesus. I'm simply going to count to three. And at the end of three, if that's you, I just want you to put up your hand high enough and long enough so that I can see it, so that I can pray with you, and then I can pray for you. And I believe there is going to be some transformations today. Come on, there is going to be some people changed today. How many Christians would wave your hand at me right now and say, I'm believing for salvations. Come on, anybody believing for salvations? Anybody believing for rededications? Come on, anybody believing for transformation in people's lives? You can put those hands down. I'm simply going to count to three. Come on, one. Come on, destiny's calling two. Come on, three, if that's you, just lift up that hand high enough and long enough and wave it at me so that I can see it. Yes, yes, sir, I see that in the balcony. Yes, ma'am, I see it in the balcony. Anybody else? Anybody? Yes, I see that hand back there. Anybody else? Yep, I see that hand. Yep, I see that hand. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Yes, I see your hand. Anybody else? Just wave it at me. Yeah, I see your hand all the way in the back there waving at me. I see those hands. Thank you right now. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Just wave it. Wave it at me so I know who I'm praying with and who I'm praying for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see that hand. Everybody, would you say this prayer with me? Yes, ma'am. I see that hand in the balcony. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Come on, everybody say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I've messed up. I've fallen short. I've missed the mark. I've sinned. And today, I repent. I turn to you, God. I believe that my sins have been wiped away. And according to your word, I'm about to enter 
into a season, a life, an eternity of refreshing. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me, rising from the dead, so that I could live a transformed life in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen. Hey, what are they doing in heaven right now for people that just said that prayer? Come on, what are they doing in heaven right now? What are they doing in heaven? Awesome. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you were blessed and you were encouraged to move forward in your relationship with God. Stay connected with us. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, email us at prayer at wolcc.net. If you loved what you saw today, there's more on the web. You can go to our website, wolcc.net, and find more messages just like this on demand. Follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. We look forward to connecting with you and we can't wait to see you again at our next gathering. God bless you.